Hello, my quilting friends. Leah Day here with a new tip video for the machine quilting block party. We have pieced and quilted nine of our blocks for the Sunshine Surprise quilt, and we're ready to start putting them together. So in this video, we're gonna learn how to prepare our blocks, get our binding ready to go, and start connecting them together so our quilt will be nearly finished. So let's get started first working on our blocks. So let's learn how to prep up a block together. The first step is to go on ahead and mark what size it's gonna be when you trim it down. And I decided on 14 and a half inches. And so what that should leave is about a half of an inch all the way around the stitching. So line this up nicely and then use a water soluble pen to go all the way around the block and then use that first set of marks and rotate your ruler and give yourself a nice 14 and a half inch square. So once you get that marked, take it to your machine and you're gonna stitch on that marked line. I'm gonna show you what I've done here. I have already stitched along that line and I also stitched an eighth of an inch inside of it. And what this did is it flattened out that edge, it stabilized it. If I was just to cut this without any stitching, without any securing, then this fabric would be totally unsecure and very, very wobbly. I also have a very puffy batting here, and that's gonna make it really challenging to put the blocks together accurately. So by adding that extra, I call it a victory lap, you go around and then go around inside of that line, it's really gonna stabilize it, make it so much easier to go together. So that's how I prepped up the block and now it's time to trim it. And I'll line the ruler up again with my stitching line with that victory lap and grab a sharp rotary cutter and trim it up. We're gonna work one side at a time, rotate it around. You wanna trim this up nice and accurately to 14 and a half inches square. So I've prepared all the blocks for the third row of the quilt. I'm working with block number three, block number six, and block number nine. I've done the victory lap and I've trimmed all of them down to 14 and a half inches. And you can find the instructions and the binding amounts, what you need to cut for this project in the block number nine pattern. So let's get started first working only with block number three in our binding strips. We're gonna have one and a half inch folded binding for the front and one inch binding, not folded, just straight, for the back. You wanna make sure before cutting your binding that you pre-wash, starch, and press it, and actually starch it twice so it's nice and stiff and stable. You don't want the binding to go loosey-goosey and be wiggly-wobbly as you're connecting these pieces together. So to get started with the connecting process, we're gonna place a one-inch piece of back binding, and we're gonna place this right side up. Then we're gonna to top it with the quilt block right side up. And notice that we've cut this binding intentionally a little longer than our block. That's so just in case something shifts and wiggles, we have more than enough binding to cover that edge. We're gonna top this with the folded binding so that the raw edges are facing the right. Raw edges to raw edges, basically. So that's our stack of binding. We're gonna take this to the machine and stitch all of these layers together with an accurate quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm using white R-fill thread. This is 50 weight Mako cotton, and I've lowered my stitch length down to 1.6 millimeters. So this is gonna stitch together nice and secure. I'm just making sure that all the layers, my back binding, my quilt, and that front binding, all of those raw edges are nice and straight and lined up together along that side. I'm using my quarter inch patchwork foot. I'm just stitching slowly and carefully. I'm gonna stop about every two inches just to double check. Double check that everything's in nice alignment as I stitch all the way down. And just make sure as you finish up, you finish up as accurately as you started. Just make sure everything's in nice alignment as you stitch all the way off. And again, you the binding strips are gonna be a little longer then the quilt block, and that's okay. We can always trim that up before we start putting the rows together. The next step is to turn the block over and work on the back binding. We're gonna fold this over. If you wanna take it to your iron, you can press it. 
I think it's just fine to just really firmly finger press this over. So that looks good. I'm gonna flip it back to the front. And I do wanna clarify, we're only folding over the back binding. We're not gonna mess with this front binding yet. So this is ready to go and ready to attach to the next block in our row. And that's block number six. I'm gonna take that block and flip it over so it's right side down. I'm gonna top it with block number three and it's right side up. Now we're going to align that top edge of the block and we're gonna align the edge of the back binding with the edge of block number six. So lining all that up, we're gonna take this to the machine and stitch this seam through the back binding and through block number six to connect the blocks together. Again, making sure that the top edges of the blocks are nicely aligned and this edge of the binding is nicely aligned with the edge of block six. And slide it underneath the foot and stitch on down. And again, I'm gonna stop about every two or three inches or so. Just lift up on the block a bit, make sure that those edges are nicely aligned. I do like using my patchwork foot for this. It just fits nicely down into this channel created by the binding and works really easily to connect these blocks together accurately. As we near this bottom edge, I also wanna make sure that the bottom edge of the blocks are coming together nicely. Again, we're gonna have extra binding down here. Don't worry about that but just look at the edges of the blocks and make sure they're nicely lined up and that this edge of the back binding still lined up against the edge of that block. So here's what our blocks look like when you've connected them together. I'm gonna flip it over the back. So our back binding, this one inch piece of back binding, once you stitch it, it becomes a little half inch strip and if you've sewn this accurately with a quarter inch seam allowance, then both of your seam allowances will nest together just exactly right in the middle of that channel. Now, if you find that this doesn't work out really well and it feels like there's too much fabric here, just take a pair of scissors and trim it up and that will help things lay flat and even. So to finish up binding, we're going to flip over our front binding, this folded edge, and again, give it a good finger press. You might even wanna use one of those finger pressing tools to really get, or just scrape it with your fingernail just to get a nice accurate fold. And this is one that I will oftentimes take it to my iron and press it flat. I know we have a little bit of water soluble marker here where we marked our block, but that's all getting covered up by binding. So I feel like it's gonna be a-okay to press with your iron if you wanna get this super nice and flat. So you press it over and this fold should reach your opposite stitching line. And so now you have a lot of options for finishing this. You could finish this with top stitch on your machine and that's just a straight stitch about an eighth of an inch away from that folded edge. You could also finish it by hand just by like a little applique stitch running along that fold and into the corresponding block. That's the way to get an absolutely seamless finish. Just run along a line of hand stitches along it. I'm gonna go with the top stitch. I'm just gonna stitch straight line right along this edge about an eighth of an inch inside and then I'll do the same thing on the opposite side so it looks balanced. So let's go in the machine and I'll show you how to stitch it. So I've just rolled up my block into the arm of the machine and then now I'm focusing on this front binding, making sure that it fully encases those seams. I'm gonna slip it underneath my foot. And you could use an edge stitching foot for this. That would work really well because it would give you a nice accurate placement for your line of stitching. My patchwork foot here has a little shoulder that I like to line up the edge of my binding against that shoulder in the foot. So that works too. And it's I'm just taking that fold and if you see, you have a stitching line from where you attached the binding to this block and you're folding over so that that fold meets that stitching line. And then as you stitch it on, 
if everything has worked out right, and if it's all nice and flat, and your binding hasn't gone loosey-goosey or wobbly-bobbly on you, then this should look just as good on the front as it does on the back. It's a little bit tricky sometimes with different methods. Some methods look great on one side, but terrible on the other. Of course, any time that you're stitching from the surface, you don't always have control over what's going on on the back of the quilt. If you're really worried about how it will look, then go with the hand binding option and stitch this uh, whole folded edge down by hand if you're really worried about how it's gonna look on the back of the quilt. So if ever you feel like you can't really get the folded binding to cooperate and it's just not wanting to fold over far enough, you know, put gloves on your hands, you'll get a lot more control over what you're doing, over kind of the fabric and the quilt. And then if you need to, use a seam ripper or any kind of stiletto and just poke at it. <laughs> and oftentimes you can poke it into submission and get the layers to cooperate with you. As you near the bottom edge, you wanna just make sure that that fold stays nice and straight and even with that line of stitching. So once I reach the bottom edge, I'm gonna rotate and just stitch right along that excess binding on the end and rotate all the way around again. And I'm gonna stitch back down along that opposite side. Now this side doesn't technically have to be secured down, but it looks nice when you have both lines of stitching running parallel with one another. It's just kind of an extra additional step, but I always think that it looks really good. Of course, there are a lot of layers here, which is why my machine is sounding pretty loud as it stitches right down the seam. So this is the method we're gonna to use to connect all of our blocks together. Attach that front and back binding, flip over the back binding, sew it to the next block, and then finish off that edge by doing a little bit of straight top stitching. So here is our first row. This is block number eight, block number seven, and block number one, and I've already connected them together. And here's our second row. This is block number two and four and five. So I hope that you'll follow along and connect these blocks together into rows. When it comes to connecting the rows together, the method is exactly the same. The only difference is you're gonna be working with longer strips. So you'll wanna take a minute to line up your ruler and trim off these little bits of extra binding. And then you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're going to add a strip of front and back binding to the bottom edge of row number one and then you're gonna flip it over. Once you stitch that on, you're gonna flip over that back binding and stitch it on to the top of row number two. And then you'll fold over that top binding and finish those edges and that will connect it together super nicely. Now you will want to try and match up these joins and the best way to do that is just by pinning it. And if you find that one block might be slightly bigger than the other one, I'm like, it looks like this block for me looks just a little bit big. This isn't lining up quite right. You can kind of stretch the other block and pen and just kind of wiggle the fabric into shape. But even if these joints don't match up just exactly perfectly, your, block, your quilt and your blocks are still gonna look gorgeous. So that's how we are gonna connect all of our blocks together. And you can see we have this beautiful space here between the blocks. If you wanted to go back over it with a little bit more quilting, that's definitely open to you too. So that's it for connecting our blocks together. At this point, you should be able to connect nine blocks together, that's three rows, and connect those rows together as well. And you're really gonna be mostly done with your quilt. And then the last few blocks taking us out through the rest of the year, it'll be really easy to finish those up, connect them together, and your sunshine surprise quilt will be done in time for the next quilt along that we'll be starting in 2017. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you're looking for the pattern and for the binding requirements, you can click right here to find them all in the block number nine quilt pattern. Until next time, let's go quilt.